the Lord, saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Founder and pastor, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd, and today's Bible study, we're going to be talking about hell. Yeah, let's talk about hell. Jesus talked a lot about hell. We're going to talk about the falses of hell. You know, people say hell is right here on earth. People say hell don't exist, or people tell you God will never send you to hell. Well, we're going to look at scriptures where Jesus talked about hell. We're also going to look at places in the Bible where hell is, is talked about. There's a place in the Old Testament called Sheol. In the New Testament, it's called Hades. But there was also a physical physical place called Gehenna in the Bible that Jesus talked about. So I want you as I always say, get your Bibles, your paper, and your pen, and get ready for a mighty word from God. And as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm-hmm. God bless. Yeah, there's a hell, but you ain't gonna burn from hell. 
What does verse 9 say in there? It says, what, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from his glory of his power. Amen? Everlasting. So yeah, you burn forever. Amen? Let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. I knew this subject wasn't going to be that popular, but you need to know about it. Especially in a time such as we are in today. Amen? Actually, I'm bringing all this stuff up because I had to go back into my own notes from school and what my bishop taught me and what I learned in Bible college and Bible school and all that stuff just to bring out some of this stuff. So I'll be giving a lot of information, okay? Hopefully it won't bore you. All right? Uh, Matthew 10, 28 says, And fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul. But rather, fill him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body. Where? In hell. In hell. Who is that you should fear? God. Amen. Let's look at the synoptic one. Go to Luke chapter 12. We got a lot of scripture to tell a lot of scripture. Luke chapter 12, verse 5. For those of you who like to study, I'll tell you, take these notes down. Amen? Amen? And this is Jesus speaking. He said, But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, for which after he has killed has the power to cast into hell. Yet I say unto you, fear him. <laughs> Amen? Did you have a healthy fear of the Lord? Mm. Luke 12, verse 5. Now, Jesus talked about hell more than anybody. People who do not accept the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ will go to hell and be banished from God forever. That's why we need to get our families and people saved. Remember this week, earlier this week, I talked about, we talked about Jesus. Remember that? For those of you who were here. Then I talked about what? Just simply obey God. Amen. But do who want their family members to go to hell? Nobody. Nobody would want to see their family members burn forever. I know I don't. I got a question for you. If you are going to be with God forever, where do you think people who don't know God are going? Yeah. If you're going to be, you love Jesus and you accepted him, you know you're going to be with God. So where do you think people who don't know God are going? Amen. Amen. They sure are. Go to Mark chapter 9. So I'm looking back. Mark 9. Looking at verse 43, Mark 9, 43 says, And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered every one at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears, for the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of men. Amen. But they understood not this saying, and it was hid from them, that they proceeded not, and they feared to ask him of that saying. Then there arose a reasoning among them, which of them should be the greatest. And Jesus, perceiving the, perceiving the thought of their heart, took a child and sent him by him, and said unto them, Whoever shall receive this child in my name receiveth me, and whosoever shall receive me receive him that sent me. For he that is least among you all is the what? Same shall be great. Amen? Amen? Why am I bringing that up? The fire will be quenched and the worm, your conscience about where you are, won't die. I'm getting ready to bring out something. See, Jesus told us about places where the fire will be quenched and the worm won't die. And he said, don't oh, never suffer the children to come up. Well, even when I thought about that little six-year-old who died, how can a man kill a six-year-old? Did she go to heaven? Yeah. Jesus said, never suffer under the little children that come under me. If she knew right from wrong, I don't know. But I know there are people who got born again at real young ages. Amen? All right, this place that Jesus is talking about is called Gehenna. This is a place in Jerusalem where the fire is never put out. People won't, people who couldn't afford to bury their dead where they are all animals, right? Worms and parasites will come out of their bodies. 
This means the person will always face the fact that they rejected God. And Jesus used this illustration to talk about hell. The people knew what Jesus was talking about. If there is a heaven, God knows there's got to be a hell. God knows there's got to be a hell. Now, Jehovah was a place in Jerusalem. And every time Jesus talked about hell, he gave a picturesque form so that you could see it. So, let me draw a little picture for you. So people would walk by this place and they would see smoke from all over around the city. They would just see the smoke coming up from this place called Jehovah. Right? So they couldn't afford to bury their dead. You had to have some money to put people in the grave. Amen? So instead of that, they would throw their dead animals in this pit and it burned 24 hours a day. And when you walked by, you smelled it. You saw the burning animals. You saw the burning carcasses. And you saw worms going in and out. Amen? And that was Jesus' description of hell because when you die, your body burns. And then the flesh comes back on and it burns off again. And the flesh comes back on and it burns off again. And worms be going all through your body when you're in there. Ooh. So you're constantly burning forever. And you feel every inch of the pain. Every bit of it. If you died and didn't have no leg, you went to hell with no leg. If you died blind, you woke up in hell blind. But if you died and knew Jesus and went to heaven blind, you woke up and was able to see. If you died without no legs, when you woke up in heaven, you had a new leg. Alright? But in this place, Jesus had to give them a description of what hell was like. Constantly burning. Your flesh constantly coming on and burning off. Burning, coming on and burning off. Who wants that kind of torture for eternity? Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Matthew 23. Matthew 23. We're going to look at the same thing we're talking about, Japan. That's a physical place in Jerusalem. Matthew 23, verse 33. Open oh, right on this. 23, verse 33. You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of what? Hell. Now that's Jesus talking to the religious folk. You serpents, you vipers. You no, know, I shouldn't say the word cuss out, but there it is again. He's talking to people who are blind. He's saying, you serpent, you viper, you snake, you know, you poisonous one. How are you going to escape them? You can't escape damnation. You better repent. Amen? The people knew about the natural Jehenna, but Jesus is talking about an Jesus is talking about an internal damnation of hell. Because you want to die within before you die. Amen? You want to die spiritually. And you want to be dying within. See, that's an external, an eternal hell. Because you want to be judged. The moment you die, you're immediately going to go one of two places, your spirit. That's what made me think about these people who got killed in Colorado. I said, where did they go? Who knew Jesus? Because the moment they closed their eyes and died, they either went straight, their spirit either went straight to hell or their spirit went straight to hell. But you're going somewhere. Amen? But it's up to you to make that decision where you want to go. Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. I told you I'm heavy tonight. Uh, and I pray God that I convey this because I don't want nobody in this room to go to hell. Amen? And I hope you're making you think. I want to cause you to think tonight. You don't know the day, minute, or hour it's going to come your way. Those people just thought they were going to go see Batman. And some guy walks in there and kills them. Amen? Amen? I even thought about the movie Batman. I like those kind of movies too, but then I bat is demonic. Everything about that movie was demonic. And this person, you know, and I think about people playing video games and all that stuff. You know, my son plays all that stuff, and I'm like, you know, did this thing set it up like this? You know, because in America we play all those killing games and we lose uh, <clears throat> compassion for anyone. So watching somebody he get chopped off and shot, don't mean nothing. They said the man was walking around smiling as he had some great victory. He had planned this thing, man. He's, he's narcissistic. You know what narcissistic means? He had no feelings. Most serial killers don't have no feeling about none of that. It's a joy to them because they want fame. They want the glory of God. They, they are being God for the day. Amen. So Revelation chapter 20. Let's look at it. verses 11 through 15. 
20, 11 to 15. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. See? I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. Oh, boy. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works. So you immediately going to be judged according to your works. Is your name written in that book? Ooh, I hope so. Verse 13. And the sea gave up the dead. Ooh. So it don't matter where you die, even if you get cremated, your ashes going to come together. Bow. And you're going to be right in the presence of the Lord. It don't matter. You'll be buried, burned, drowned. Your body will come in a twinkling of an eye together. To meet the Lord. Amen. Amen. And the sea gave up her dead, which were in it. And, and death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them. Mm -hmm. See, so everybody's even going to come up from hell to be judged. Yes. Amen. 